Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings and the Pro Football Bias Plus Reports. And this is Ben and Barry on football. Hello out there, this is Ben Dickerson, your co-host. We are here to review a bombastic, I couldn't think of a better word, but I think bombastic is pretty good. A bombastic wild card weekend and preview divisional weekend. So let's get rocking. That's exactly what we're going to do. Let's kick off the first quarter. So, Ben, first quarter we talk about what had happened. <laughs> you see, what had happened was, <laughs> you know, both in terms of the Bias Plus reports, you know, as they looked at the matchups, you know, and let's all, let's kick it off um, with <laughs> the intriguing game of the week. <laughs> we might as well jump right into it. We're kicking it off with the intriguing game of the week? Hey, that's what it was last week. We're talking about last week, right? Uh, go ahead. Arizona <laughs> Cardinals at the Los Angeles Rams. Bias plus score of 0 0.3 favorite the Cardinals, mainly because they had a much better turnover average turnover differential that they were supposed to be able to make up those points um but man it was almost symbolic of the challenges of young young inexperienced quarterbacks at this level of play <laughs> what do you think about that yeah the the, the level of the quarterbacks is was extremely important in this game as well as in just about every game last week, arguably. Uh, so I 100% agree with that. I also believe that the level uh, of the head coaches and offensive coordinators also, and defensive coordinators, excuse me, also had a whole lot to do with the outcomes of all six games. I'm glad you said that because I had a question I didn't get a chance to to ask you we talked early on about arizona running the air raid offense are they still running the air raid <laughs> uh, as far as i can tell i believe there are still elements of the air raid offense there i think basically they are but they've tweaked it so much that it's almost unrecognizable and i can understand why they would tweak it i mean obviously it's the nfl okay it's a lot easier to recruit players to fit your system in college year after year after year and have them play for you for at least three years in a row before you have to even think about bringing in new recruits, especially if you're a D1 school, as opposed to continuously having the right uh, type of personnel to run a particular system like the Airy in the NFL. So yeah, it's been tweaked up quite a bit. A lot of it's been turned uh, a little bit more toward helping Kyler Murray. Um, you know, you have to deal with offensive line changes, COVID, injuries, nothing new. But as far as the system is concerned, I believe it's been, for lack of a better word, tweaked up quite a bit. Ben, Airy. He's telling, he's looking for the green grass. He's telling this guy, go here. Da, 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 da. It seems to me that that style of offense would fit a really good pocket quarterback better than a guy who starts running around a lot. Sometimes it's, it's like Kyler, he, he's so good athletically and he can get away with a lot of that stuff. And it's, it's fantastic. Everybody loves it. It makes great theater. Um, but I just don't know if that's the, the type of quarterback that, that can make the best use of, uh, that type of offense. Number one, he has to move because of his height. So he has to find this passing lane. And, you know, I think he, that he's very smart to have pulled it off to this particular point. Um, but it's just interesting, you know, again, as, as the, uh, 
competition has gotten better, you know, that, that you can see where they've, you know, they've struggled. Um, and especially coming down the line, you know, they kind of struggled. But um, it was an interesting game. I hated to see Kyler have his Carson Wentz brain fart moment in the end zone. Um, but I don't know what they were even trying to, you know, what they were even trying to run down there. You know, they got so many things moving. You know, they got this guy, they want to move it and groove it with this guy, and he's moving ahead, all of that. And all that's nice, but if you're on your own end zone line, sometimes you got to be able to line up and bang something <laughs> and make some moves, you know? So, you know, um, and again, that that ability to run on them up the middle, we talked about that during the uh, during the, a season. And uh, it allowed the Rams to really get a good rush game going. And it kept Matt Stafford in a very efficient numbers grouping. Have, did you, have you seen his passing numbers? Yeah, I saw his passing numbers. Let me, let me address a couple of things that you said. First of all, as far as the air raid offense is concerned, it's a lot easier to run in college, especially if one of the premises is you, uh, you want to throw to the green grass. There's a whole lot less green grass in the NFL, talent-wise. Uh, number two, um, the brain fart. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could call it that. Uh, I watched the play several times. I heard several people talk about it and somewhat break it down. You could probably get a better breakdown if you look at the all 22, which I know you have um, the ability to do. But it looks like Kyler actually had somebody in his sights, brought the ball up and then brought it back down again. And as soon as he brought it back down again, he got himself in trouble. If he had just cranked it and let it go, it would have been completed, incompleted. That is an issue that we... I Both wanted. of those things on that, two of those things out of, those, out of that three would have been better than what happened to him. Um, the ability to get the pass off to the, so many open guys for the quick pass underneath that I, I don't think these guys just they just don't see them. You know you, why? Why? Whoa! Wait! Wait! Oh, you're slowing down now. You're taking this play, and you're talking about things you've seen from other quarterbacks on other teams do or not do. I don't think that's right in this situation. What do you mean so many open guys? If it was so many open guys, why did he take the sack? Well, that, that becomes the question. Um, and, and when you go back and look at the play, uh, I, I, this play might be a bad example of what I'm thinking about, but it did remind me of those thoughts that I'm having where I'm looking at some of these guys. And again, I think I've said it before, the, 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 the pass – goes to the, the, the receiver, which actually has one of the, the probably lowest percentage chances of, of making the catch. But he makes the catch, and it's just wonderful. But if you really go back and look at the play so often, there was two or three guys that was open within five to seven yards if he had just given them the – got the ball to him and let them go, you know. And, and that's what I'm saying. Now, that's maybe the difference between Tom Brady and some of these other guys. Tom Brady sees that and gets that off. But um, so often, and I, I think I saw that, uh, and I'm going to look for it more so with Kyler to, to make sure because, again, his, his ability to see things means that, unlike maybe, let's say, we talked about uh, um, Ben Roethlisberger getting the ball off in, in two seconds, you know, at his height, as soon as he gets the ball, he still sees the field. He doesn't necessarily have to move to a sight lane. You know, he can just get the ball off. And I think that, that the NFL has realized Kyler can't necessarily do that. So he kind of has to move. They won a lot of games, man. He's got really good numbers. He's as super talented. As, he's as, super as, talented. As far I think, as. I think he's overcoming the system. I think he's making the system look better. Look like it's working when actually he's making up for it, the deficiencies. But as, as far as um, having a bunch of guys open underneath and taking a harder pass and making it or not making it, we see that a lot. 
And we see it from a lot of different quarterbacks, good ones and bad ones. But we usually see it between the 20s. Where they were at, at the time of that play, there was nothing else really to do but try to stretch the field with somebody and hit underneath to get themselves out of the shadow of the goalpost. And he brought the ball up quickly and he saw somebody, but for whatever reason, he didn't feel good about it. Fire. He pulled it back down and he got caught. So I believe, and I haven't seen from the defensive side of the play. So I don't know who he was looking at. I don't know what routes were run. I don't know any of that, but I believe he had some body open underneath quickly to get him at least eight, 10 yards from where they snapped the ball, get them out of the shadow of the goalpost and continue the drive. But he wasn't confident in the throw, pulled it back down, took the sack. Now, I've actually seen a report when they, that they showed where he actually has a history of these types of throws from the end zone. There, there was two or three, four examples from past games that they showed where he's actually done this. So he's been somewhat successful. I, I don't know. I think it's mixed results. I don't think he's had too many pick sixes before this, but he's, he actually has done that before. But long story short, um, we were looking for a much closer game. Uh, the Rams look absolutely insane. OBJ um, is having an absolute field day. <laughs> he's he, he's got to be loving it, you know. And uh, Aaron Donald is is scaring the hell out of everybody. So um, onward uh, beyond that, the the Rams get to go unleash that, and we'll talk about that in uh, the third quarter when we do do the uh, matchups for the Bias Plus reports for the Rams and what Tampa Bay. So um, let's see here. How did you make out last week with your picks? Um, <laughs> I actually feel pretty good about this. Uh, of the six games, I won four. Um, the two games that I lost, one of them I went with the bias and one I did. And, and now hindsight tells me that one of the picks was probably a silly shot at an upset. That would be picking the Steelers over Kansas City. The other one was a really, really, at the time, tough call with the Cardinals and Rams game. I kind of lean toward the bias because I was believing in the turnover differential difference. And I knew that lately over the last, well, not the game before, not week 18, but maybe a couple of weeks just before week 18, Stafford was showing a few little chinks in his armor as far as making bad decisions and having some turnovers. So I coupled those two things and I went with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. And uh, I believe I look back at our video from last week. And I do remember saying something about the two receiver cores and how good Cooper Cup was. But when you take Cooper Cup out of the equation, you're looking at Van Jefferson and Beckham and Higby, as opposed to AJ Green, Christian Kirk, and Zach Ertz. And I thought Zach Ertz kind of tipped the balance of the scales a little bit for me. Funny, Zach Ertz did have a good game, if I remember, but it wasn't a great one. And by the way, Beckham didn't have a great game day either. He had a really good day. He had four targets. He caught all four passes. I think he got 50-some-odd yards, and he scored a big touchdown. And touchdown, obviously, was huge. Um. Ertz, I'm not exactly sure, but I can look real quick and find out what he did. But I remember him catching some passes and helping to move the sticks. So I was kind of right in what I was trying to figure out was the difference between the two receiver cores. Unfortunately, the difference was Higby. Freaking Higby woke up. Higby had big catches. I don't think he scored a touchdown. I can't remember if he scored a touchdown or not, but I know he had some really nice catches. So all in all, um, 
well, yeah, right. We were talking about what I did last week. So, yeah, the other games to me, I think they were easy picks. Uh, did I go with the bias on everyone? Yes, yes, yes. No. So three of my four wins were with the bias. One was without. So I feel good about that. The other one was a silly pick taking the Steelers to upset the Kansas City. And, <laughs> excuse me, the Cardinals Ram game. Yeah, it was, that was silly. Um, but I, I do silly things sometimes. But the Cardinals Rams game, I thought was was a toss up. I really did, and um, I wasn't surprised at what the Rams did, but I was unfortunately surprised that the Cardinals just seemed to be not really ready for prime time. Uh, okay, I mean, one quarterback threw the ball a lot, at, at, you know. I'm talking about Kyler Murray. He, you know, he had way more attempts. At passes, he he passed to way more people than um, Stafford did, but Stafford was way more efficient and, and, and deadly in what they did, and so um, that's what you got to look. That's what you got to look at. There was a much higher level of execution across the board for the Rams. So absolutely, absolutely, Stafford was on point. Stafford was on point. All his passes were on point. He he was fantastic. Yeah. He used everybody, and he had the run game going. And the crazy thing is, again, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not talking about the numbers because we can look at the numbers, I, you know, but the eye test tells me that neither one of these defensive fronts are really – or really excel against the run. So both teams had the opportunity to move the ball on the ground. Unfortunately, because Stafford was so sharp and because their game plan looked like it was golden – and everything was working pretty much the way they expected it to. Um, they were able to get some scores on the board and take the run game away from the Cardinals. Um, and again, like I said, not only are we talking about a difference in quarterbacks, but we're talking about a difference between Sean McVay and Kingsbury. Sean McVay was ready. Sean McVay is talked about by his peers as a genius, okay? And he he's had his mistakes and he's had his – problems but this weekend Sean McVay was nice great play calling mixed in the run it was fantastic interesting I heard them talk about uh, McVay and Stafford um, recently and he said I'll paraphrase something to the effect of McVay saying that with Stafford you know if he gives him a play you know if it's a three deep zone, he doesn't have to tell them. If it's a three deep zone, do this. You'll give him the play, and he'll oh, let no. him, and he'll Not handle no veteran it from quarterback. There. Yeah. No. So apparently, you used that. to have to do that with, you know, um, the previous quarterback they traded to the Lions, Goff. Goff. You know. So if, if that's what he's saying, if that's true, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's nice to have that. So. Um, just for fun, just for a little bit of fun in this quarter, because uh, we only got to, we don't have a lot of games to talk about. So that, that quarter is not going to take a long time. Um, but I wanted to share, I want to share a little Madden rating fun. And that's what I was laughing at and looking at. All right. Can you see that right there? Yes, I can. So here are your overall Madden ratings. And I have pretty much all of the quarterbacks who are going to be in the divisional round here. As you can see there, Tannehill and Burrow, pretty close. Burrow's 85, Tannehill's 86, Jimmy G 75. <laughs> and the funny thing is, Lance is like a 72 on the game. But you can do so much more with him because of his athleticism. The athleticism is always a plus. You know, I'm a big pocket guy, but you know, athleticism is a plus, no doubt. So then, let's see if we can just jump over here. You look at these three guys. <laughs> so then you got 97 straight across. <laughs> And I do believe your favorite receiver on, on the Packers, what's his name? 
can't be anybody but Devontae Adams. Is a 99. So okay. on that on that team, you got a 97 quarterback throwing to a 99 receiver. That combination exists on the game. And then Patrick Mahomes is laying in there with these guys at a straight 97. So Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes, based on the ranking, the ratings database for EA Sports Madden 22, are all 97. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. And then to finish it off, we have Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford. They both look like they're human at the very least, with Josh at 86 and Stafford at 82. So out of the final eight, uh, my beloved Niners have Garoppolo. He is the, the lowest rated um, quarterback of the group. But uh, what do you think about that? That, that is a as a comparative look at your at, at the remaining quarterbacks for the division uh, playoffs. Well, thank God for your beloved 49ers that that's Madden and not real life. Jimmy Garoppolo is the perfect quarterback for the system that the 49ers run. He's proven that several times in the past, and he's especially proven that lately during this playoff run and just before the end of the season. Um, if anybody, any NFC team that's left has a chance to beat the Packers, it's the 49ers, in my estimation. I think they are the best equipped team to go up there and give them trouble. All right, well, we'll talk about that in the, in the uh, third that's, quarter. That's just my opinion about Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, okay, all right, all right. But anyway, I just thought that would be interesting just to see where they all stand on a purely quantitative uh, ratings database. I'm sure, you know, uh, like that what you're saying, what you're saying, what I said about why I thought Garoppolo should be starting in, instead of Trey Lance, he runs that offense. But as a standalone quarterback, when you look at him versus Mahomes, you take him just out of that system, both, both of them out of that system, and just look at him characteristic-wise, you know, I'm sure, for example, awareness, you know, I didn't really look at awareness, but I'm sure there's a vast differential between Tom Brady and Garoppolo, you know, within the within vast the, differential. Yeah. As opposed, you mean like that? Well, let's, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. I got I, it right yeah. here. All I'm right. curious. Let's see now. I see Tom Brady. I see an awareness of 99. No, that's hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> I see Jimmy, Gar Jimmy Garoppolo. I see, where do I go? Pat? Awareness, 79. <laughs> that, you know what? Stop with the Madden stuff, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It doesn't even make sense. It dude, makes no sense whatsoever. Dude, dude. Garoppolo, through the interception that we all feared, the entire game, we're like, just don't, so just don't do that one. Oh, oh, oh he, did he did it. You're killing me, man. Did it. You, you're killing Anywho. me. Anywho, you, you are the only person I know who doubts their team as much as you do. They, I got Eagles fans over here saying that their team is way greater than they are. And then when they lose, they all start talking about how they lost and start talking about hoping the Cowboys lose. That's one end of the spectrum. And here you are at the other end of the spectrum. Your team almost plays a perfect game. But for some strange reason, Shanahan has a brain fart and starts throwing the ball around when he doesn't have to. And the guy ends up getting picked. What the hell? Ain't the Cowboys number one in defense? What the hell? That's not on him. That has nothing to do with his awareness. Zero. Nothing. The man is playing great ball now. If he lays an egg this weekend, oh, well, okay. But right now, up to this point, he's been playing really, really well. If you were just looking at him on an awareness level, okay, and you had to rate them on a scale of 100, and you were looking at Tom Brady, where would you rate him? Garoppolo? No, Tom Brady. Tom Brady? Where would you rate Tom Brady? Where would you rate Garoppolo? At this moment, 90. 
90. Okay. 90. All right. 89, uh -huh. 89, 90. And the only, <laughs> and I think, and I don't know, I don't play Madden, I don't study that stuff, but I believe that probably experience and success in the past have something to do with that rating, which would be unfair to Garoppolo because although he's been in the NFL for a number of years, he doesn't have the number of starts under his belt that Brady has, nowhere near. He's a veteran, but he doesn't have the number of starts that hardly any of those guys. Stafford outstarts him. <laughs> Stafford, Brady, Ryan, uh, Rogers, they all severely outstart him. Remember, most he'd spent years in New England as a backup. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He came it. to Francis, San Francisco and was, had some injury problems. So he hasn't started the number of games that these guys have. So he's always going to be below them in the awareness. Well, I mean, but 90 is high. 90 is high. I mean, a, a 90. Because I'm judging him on how he's playing this season up to now. Okay. All right. That's the fun of man is that is that there's a number and you, you have to kind of commit to it. You know what I mean? And it, it takes you to. You no, know, you have to commit to you it. Know? I mean, you said you said 90. So, you know, yeah. you actually well, you had asked me on that. I gave an answer. Now, but I'm not numbers, committed to nothing. You and I, uh, the, 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 the bias plus report was uh, about 67 percent, four for six. You were four for right. six. So we, we both kind of went different ways but of the other games any particular mention that you have on any of the, the pre those previous games before we move to the second quarter uh i think the Bengals are looking really really scary but i believe they were able to take advantage of the raiders i think the raiders came in with uh not a solid plan about how they wanted to attack the Bengals defense um i think they had an idea but i and i they must not have played each other during the season. So I think they had to plan on this one straight off of film. I could be wrong. I don't know. I can't remember that stuff. But I don't believe those two teams played in the past this season. Um, and the Bengals were cooking on all cylinders, and the Raiders really just couldn't get going. They, they had some, some stops and starts. They had some spurts of good ball. Uh, Josh Jacobs looked like he was fine and ready to go. But again, you know, you fall behind, you can't stick with your run game, you try to get back into the game, um, and then things start to fall apart. As far as the Patriots are concerned, I never thought they had a chance in this game, and they absolutely didn't. They were completely embarrassed and whipped by a far superior team, as I called it, in the beginning of the season. The Buffalo Bills are my pick. Yeah, I'm ready to do it. Buffalo Bills are my pick to go to the Super Bowl out of the AFC. OK, um, the Ooh. Eagles, the Eagles never had a chance. Never. You guys got to start waking up there out there in Philadelphia. Call your team what it is. It hurts a lot less when you do that. OK. And if I say something about the Eagles, good, bad or indifferent, somebody always goes, well, the Giants. So tell me something I don't know. But I believe it. It's still my team. OK, you guys are in a freaking fantasy world. There's no way they were going to go down there and do anything competitive against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Impossible. And the score proves it. And last but not least, Cowboys. They had their chances. They had their chances. They just couldn't get it done. I, 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 I'm not going to get into that because Talking about the Dallas Cowboys is going to be something that we're going to hear for a while now, for the next few weeks. And once the offseason comes, they're going to be monitoring and following everything the Dallas Cowboys do, because there's a lot of folks out there that can't believe that they gave it up like that. And the fact that it was close at the end and come down to that last play, if that shouldn't even really happen, they were lucky to even have that opportunity. <laughs> to make it look like they might do something at the end. The turnover. It was, Shame it was the turnover. Shame ben, on. I want to ask you a question about this game. I don't want to get all into whether he should have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. This is just a logistics question, okay? 
They were at the Niners' 41-yard line. Okay? Go ahead. There was 14 seconds left on the clock. So it's a 41-yard long pass to the goal line. I'm thinking your speedy wideouts run about a 4-3-4-4-40. Four, 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 which means that in 16 seconds, 14, 16 seconds, you could get two shots at the goal line from the 40. That's not a super long pass, but it is a nice deep pass. You got Lamb, you got Amari, you, you got guys that if you spread them out in this one-on-one, -on -one, they will probably win. And you don't, you know, is that, is that logistically, does that make sense that you could maybe have gotten two shots off at the end zone within 16 seconds? Two Hail Marys from 41 yards out? Yeah. Okay, with two deep safeties and the corners playing off a 10-yard cushion, so now they're only 31 yards away from the end zone? And they're turning and running because they're not worried about anything thrown no, underneath? No. I understand. You're, talk, you're thinking strategy. I'm just talking logistics. I'm just talking... Do you think that these guys could literally have ran those no, routes no. two times within a 16-second no. period? And be successful? No. No, I didn't say they would be successful. I'm just saying, no. do you think they could have gotten no. two, two shots at it? Only one shot in 16 seconds. Wait, you're what asking you could they have run two plays and gotten off two passes? Yes. Yes, they could have done that. Yes. No, that's all I'm asking. That's all. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. I didn't... Yeah, it didn't that seem they could that have done. Option. Yes, that was not, it didn't seem like that was an option that I've heard anyone even mention or discuss. No, they wouldn't, because then I have to talk strategy again. And you don't want to talk about that. So no, 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 I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the it. media in general. I haven't heard the media in general even mention that as a possibility. And I know the media in general says keep going to the sideline to get closer and then Hail Mary it. From the 30 or the 25. That ain't a Hail Mary. <laughs> exactly. That's my point exactly. It's a regular offensive play with CD Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Sed Wilson. Now you can win. Now you can win. You can't win from back there. Oh, that was my That's, a, no, that's so the that whole might point. Be a question. We that's can, why nobody's talking we, about it. We can that. talk about whether you, you know, again, I don't you're saying you can't win. Yeah, I've seen hail. We've seen hail marys. We've seen it happen. Bro. That's why they call it a hail mary, and it was in. They call it a hail mary because Dallas. you have nothing else to do. You have no other Dallas. chance. You have no, no other chance. They had time. They had time. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get ready for the second quarter where we're going to actually look at what happened last week. All right.